Um, so if anybody has any questions, fire away. Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead, you first. Uh, it's a great question. Um, what sort of extracurriculars? Um, I was a business major. I, uh, freshman year, I was an econ tutor. Um, I had econ in high school, so I came in and tutored that. Um, I was involved in a business fraternity called Pi Sigma Epsilon. I was a finance and accounting major, but I said I know I need to learn more than numbers. So it was a marketing fraternity. Um, I was a part of Beta Alpha Psi, which was the accounting, opportunity, accounting fraternity. Uh, and I was also a part of a social fraternity um, that was a small, struggling fraternity. And uh, I became social chairman, went on to become president, and made some very radical changes to the house to kind of get it back on its feet. So when I got asked questions about what did I do to make a difference, I had a laundry list of answers. I had an internship uh, doing internal audit. I uh, thought I was going to go into accounting, which is a great field, and my brother does it and loves it. But after three months, I went, please, dear God, let me do anything but this. Um, this is not me. It's not who I am. And so I, I tell people that my internship was phenomenal because it taught me what I didn't want to do. Um, so those were the things I was involved in here at, at Miami. You had a question? Uh, yes, uh, and there's actually probably one of my email addresses should be on like the second page of the book. Uh, that's probably pat at makingcollegecountbook.com, uh, which also works. So, oh, that's book purchases. All right, so just pat at makecollegecount.com uh, will connect you. Any questions? Yes? Um, besides the research you did, what are the stuff you look for on the website? Um, okay, besides GPA, what are some of the things I look for uh, to get into my class? Uh, I look for campus leadership. I look for people who are out there committed to a comprehensive academic experience. Uh, my class, and by the way, I co-write it and co-teach it with a guy named uh, Don Davis. Don also graduated with me. Uh, Steve Case, who founded AOL, is on the cover of Business Week this week about his new uh, fund. And uh, Don Davis is Steve's right-hand guy, he's his deal guy. So we want people who are committed to, by the way, another great story of a Miamian who's doing amazing things. But so we're looking for people in the class who are, who really want to be the best of the best. And, and the feeling is um, Miami prepares you if you choose to want to be the best of the best. Um, and we want to kind of give you a little push uh, as you head out the door uh, with the headband. Is your class only for business? Um, it is not only for business students, and I love to have non-business students in the class. Um, I like a, as broad a mix as I possibly can. Uh, so absolutely, positively open. Yes, sir? Uh, it's a bit more of a specific question, but uh, you uh, went into marketing. So uh, the question I had is for marketing or really any job, any job, uh, what do you recommend for uh, getting into a more specific field than just whoever will take you? So I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, for, uh, well, my question specifically pertains to marketing. That's OK. So ask the question specifically, and I'll answer it, and then I'll more broadly share it. OK, the question I had was, how do you get into a, uh, how do you get a position in a more specific field than just, for example, marketing, any business they'll have, how do you get into something more OK, um, so how do you get into a specific field? Well, I think. You know, I'm going to sound a little bit like a broken record, but at the beginning of your sophomore year, as you approach firms, and you say, what is your first name? Ben. All right, so Ben, so how do you get into a specific field? At the beginning of your sophomore year, and you go, hi, I'm Ben. I'm a sophomore at Miami University. I'm studying marketing, and I have a 3-7. Oh, OK, you're, we can talk. So you have my attention. So. Um, or I'm, I'm vice president of a marketing organization on campus, or I'm starting a marketing organization on campus. But I think um, you've got to be really proactive and talk to as many people as you can. There are broad, there is an, are an incredible number of speakers that all of the different schools bring to campus each year. So you're in the business school, but regardless of the school, there are 
industry leaders, many of whom are Miami grads or have some Miami interest or want to recruit Miami students who come speak on campus, go to those speeches, learn, and then start very small. Um, and and it, you look at it and say, okay, between freshman and sophomore year, maybe I am working at Whippy Dip at night, but if I want to be work for an ad agency, I call the president of a small local ad agency in my hometown and say, I'm willing to come work for you for 25 hours of work for free because I'm passionate about advertising and you know I, I'd like to you know get involved. Now suddenly you have an internship and then the next year you're a little more knowledgeable but I would say at any school including Miami you've got to reach out and take it. I mean you can't sit back and go to your 16 hours of classes and just assume that it's going to happen, right? So some of the career services things they talked about up front, that's going to give you a toolkit. That's going to give you access, and when you get access, you're going to know what to do, what not to do. How do you answer a question? How do you not answer a question? How do you shake a hand? How do you build a LinkedIn profile? What do you do or not do on a Facebook page? Like all very basic fundamental stuff, but you've got to learn this stuff. And then, when, then by doing that, you're going to get up to bat and you're going to start to meet people. And when you do, you're going to, you know, you're going to look and feel professional. And then off you go. But you really have to own it. Going, that 16 hours you spend in the classroom is a very small part of a really successful college experience. Next question. Yes. Uh, any study tips? Uh, yes, uh, I'll give you my favorite, favorite study tip of any in the world. Um, it's called Notes Notes. Uh, I created the work, that's why I've never heard of it. Um, so we already talked about professors. Some of this is, w when you were three years old, you figured out how to get what you wanted from your parents, right? Okay, so when you meet me as a professor, I'm hoping you want two things for me. I'm genuinely hoping you want knowledge. You want to learn what I teach. And second, you want an A. So your job is to get in my head. Okay? So let's go back to the fact that I'm going to lecture on what I think is most important. I'm going to give away pieces and parts of the test. So what I strongly recommend is when you come in, sit in front, and take good notes, I would create a second set of notes from your notes. I call them notes notes. So you may have 50 pages of notes for five weeks of a testing period. If you go through those and say, if I were Pat O'Brien, what would I test on? I bet from those 50 pages, I bet you'll get maybe three front and back pages. So six, you'll go from 50 to six. But you're in my head, you're thinking, what's he want, what's he need? To, to, on this test. And then I would learn those six pages incredibly well. If it's a class that you think is going to require some memorization, know those things cold. If it's formula based, if it's, it's easy to learn six pages. But what you've done by being smart and strategic is you've focused on that first. Then you go back and when you study your notes, you're picking off little pieces and points, little extras that might get you a point here, a point there. But if you study and give everything equal weighting, you're not going to put enough time into the things that are most important in my head and my heart, which is what I'm going to test on. Now, the other absolutely beautiful thing about the notes notes is if you figure out how to do it and do a reasonably good job of it, when you go to take a cumulative final, you're going to have six pages from the first test, you're going to have six pages from the second test, and you're going to have six pages from the last third of the semester. And so everybody else is going, I got 26 chapters of a book and 150 pages of notes, and I don't know where to begin or end. And you're going, I know exactly where to begin, and it's learning those 18 pages. Okay, and so something from that first third of the semester if he or she's going to put it on the test, it's probably going to be in those notes. Because on the, on the final, they're going to test on probably higher level material. 
less detail because they're trying to be fair. They're not going to try and make you remember some minute detail from the second class of the year that was back in September. So I think notes, notes is incredibly powerful. I also would say um, if it's a numbers-based class of any kind, you just have to do problem after problem. Do the stuff at the end of the book, you know, in the chap end of the chapter in the book, and just make sure you can do the work. If you just sit there and look at your past work and go, that makes sense, but you don't proactively do it, um, it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't work. Um, and and I, I would also say, and I think you'll hear this 10 times, sleep. Like, you're, you're not going to get your solid eight hours always before a test. But, I mean, if you had drink three Red Bulls and you're up till five, people do it. You laugh. Either, either your roommate or the person next door is going to be, if not for a regular test for finals, they're going to be so wired they're not even going to know their name. And you go, how are college tests are designed to, you know, see if you've actually learned material, to see if you can think. And you can't even spell your name. How are you going to come take my test? Uh, so, you know, sleep um, really, really matters. So, and there, there are some other techniques in the book, but I think, you know, and everything's a building block, right? If you, you got to come in class, come to class, sit in front and take good notes for notes, notes to work. But if you come to class, sit in front, take good notes, highlight the stuff that seems to be most important in real time, and then you build notes, notes from it. Now, and by the way, I'm not saying don't read the book. Okay, so I, I don't want to infer that. But once you've done this, if you keep up with the reading, but you're focused on the notes, the book adds good texture and reinforcement. And if you don't understand something, the book might add clarity because the book might say something in a different way than your professor did. But I would say that unless my name's on the spine of the book, um, the book is a really poor substitute for doing the things I'm, I'm talking about. And, and the final thing, not to beat the horse dead, um, You've got to find the study habits that work for you. You know, um, get out of your dorm, get away from your roommate, hide. Um, I, I'm a big fan of hiding, and, and it, I may sound a little like a not a nice guy suddenly, but like the person who missed five classes and wants my notes, I, I don't want to be anywhere that person can find me 48 hours, you know, from 48 hours into a test. If, if they wanted to get their grades, they could have done the work just like I did. Uh, at this point, I want my, you know, my time matters and, and I need those notes, I need those notebooks. By the way, the other advantage of starting early, and, and, and this will differ depending on where you went to high school and what the culture is at the high school, this will either be a huge change for you or you'll go, well, that's obvious. Um, you got to go see your professors, right? You go, I don't want to go, he or she is scary. Um, I don't want them to know how little I know, or how they know how little you know, right? It's not their first year, you're not their first student. But what happens is, um, if you're not keeping up on stuff, if you don't go early, the day before a test, there's a line an hour long, and he or she's got to quick, quick, quick. I mean, they'll, they'll sit for the next month in office hours, and they all have office hours. They'll sit there, and they'll have nothing to do. So as soon as you think that you're off track or you're confused, most of these classes build. Go see them. And again, some high schools I see, that's the culture. And like the idea of going to see your teacher or professor, sure, that's obvious. But in many, it's not. And you've got to get comfortable doing that. And oh, by the way, let's go all the way back to networking. Right? Um, literally last night, one of my favorite alums from my class who graduated about seven years ago emailed me and said, it's that time. Who are your three or four stars that I can recruit this year? Okay, here they are. Right, because the professors know. Because we don't see kids for an hour, an interview lasts an hour. I sit across from you for a whole semester. I know these two a whole lot better than I'd know them in an interview scenario, because I've watched them for a whole semester. I've seen their character, I've seen their work ethic, I've seen how they contribute. And so good recruiters rely heavily on professors. Professors are really good friends to have. And by the way, if you're interested in a field, 
then those friendships can last a long time. And one of my students, seven, eight years ago, he's, always, he's an incredible entrepreneur. And he started work with PricewaterhouseCoopers. He jumped to a VC, a venture capital firm. And now he's starting a uh, technology slash social media business in Chicago. He and another, uh, another guy, a friend of his, and uh, you know they keep sending me stuff. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? And so eight years later, we're still collaborating. I think it's blast. You know, for me, it's just fun. So professors, you know, you, you got to engage them. You got to understand them. You got to get in their heads, so that you make sure you get the knowledge you want. You get the grades you want. Right. Um, but also, you can't be scared of them. I mean, they're, they're normal people just like anybody else, and they know you don't know the answers, so go see them and go see them early. Other questions? If you don't have a question, you're not allowed to come afterwards and talk to me and go, I have a question. Um, yes? I love double majors. Um, love double majors, uh, and I love it when you take classes. She asked if you need to be a business major to take my class. Um, I, I'm, I'm fine with double majors, and, and I love when you do things that are completely, um, completely outside the norm for what you think you want to do in four years. One of the best classes I ever took at Miami was a nutrition class. I'd probably use that class as much today as, as half the classes I took in the business school. Um, but I, I do like double majors, um, but I like double majors with a caveat. Um, I met a student um, from IU a few years ago. He had a triple major, and he didn't have a great GPA. And it was too late. He was a senior. But I said, gee, I, I sure would have rather you have just one or two and have a GPA that would be above the hurdle rate that a lot of people would like to hire you. Because um, it's a funny story to tell. But I don't have a good GPA, but I have three majors. What does that mean? As an employer, I'm, I'm not sure what it means about you. Maybe it means you don't have focus. Maybe it means you can do a lot of things, but none of them well. Um, so, so I would say start with one, do it well. Some of them naturally pair together, but, but make, sure, um, make sure you get the grades right and make sure you're not one dimensional. Remember, go back to the success model. If you can do the double major, but still be active in extracurriculars, and, and develop meaningful work experience, I'm all for it, but I wouldn't do it at, at the expense of those things. Um, but I, you know, in, in general, I, I was a double major, but finance and accounting is easy, and there are some natural, I, I don't know, there were probably seven classes I needed to take incrementally, but I typically carried like 18 hours a semester, so, so it was fine. Um, so the question is, is an internship still relevant in the recruiting process if it's not in the field you ultimately want to go into? And, and I would say it's absolutely relevant. Uh, I know that you were able, I mean at the most fundamental level, um, I'd like to know that you got a job offer. If you got a job offer that tells me that after 90 days of doing something they thought enough of you to ask you to keep doing it. Um, that would mean a lot to me. Um, I would want to talk a little more deeply about what you did, what you liked, what you didn't like. A lot of that would give me insight as to who you are as a person, what you do like and don't like, not in theory, but in practice. And therefore, I'll know, I'll get more perspective on does he or she like the kind of work we're going to do, and or are they a cultural fit for our organization? Uh, so I think, um, I think it matters, and it matters a lot. That's why I come back to you, though, and say, Boy, I'd sure like to see you get something between sophomore and junior year and or something that even gets your foot in the water. I mean, when you, when you go to career services and at the end of your freshman or middle of your freshman year and say, what, what internships do you have in my school of study for people between freshman and sophomore year, they're going to say, we don't have a lot. I mean, that's the year you got to get creative. There are some between sophomore and junior year. There are a ton of them between junior and senior. Um, but so to get to, you know, 
you've got to get outside your comfort zone and start, you know, yeah, I know you don't usually hire juniors or sophomores for this, but here are my credentials, here are the classes I'm taking, here's my, you know, here's my role in this club or organization. Uh, and by the way, um, some of the places you have those conversations are at things like career fairs. Um, there was, you know, it was mentioned that the career fair is coming up and it's becoming a more freshman friendly environment. I, I would strongly encourage all of you to go to the career fair. I don't have the right clothes, so what? Go. You know, I'm just a freshman, I don't know what to say, so what? Go. I don't have a resume, make a resume. Go to the Career Services Center. Start to learn about, they have tons of great resources. What do I need to do to create a resume? You know what I love about you creating a resume now? Is it won't be very good. It won't be very well written, and you're gonna go, ooh, I have nothing to put in all these categories. To which I say, exactly. Now you understand what you need to build, right? And again, let's go back to high school. Like when you were a freshman and sophomore, you didn't sit around and go, at some point I have to write essays. This might be tough. Maybe I should be doing some things that are essay worthy. But you're going to all have to have a resume. So, but if, if you want to jump to the front of the class, sometimes, you know, you, you have to get be a little unconventional and, and, and step outside the norm. And you show up and start shaking hands and asking intelligent questions at a career fair as a freshman, I'm going to be impressed. Um, next question. Um, when you're in an interview, how far back would you go in terms of pulling um, from your past to answer the questions? I would always start with college first. So if someone asks me about uh, a question, tell me about a time that you were on a team. I'm getting at whether or not you have group skills and can interact and, and how that team dynamic work and what you successfully accomplished as a team. Um, and you tell me what you did on a mission trip when you were 14. Um, I would wonder what happened in the interim. So, I, so if, you're, if you had things from high school that you think are really powerful and unique, then I would say, if you're okay with it, I'd like to tell you about a couple examples from college and there, then share something I did that was fairly unique in high school. Now, I will tell you, um, and P&G still does this, um, they really want to know if, if the little interview question I asked up here, tell me about a time when you got other people excited about your idea and went out and made something happen that wouldn't have happened without you. From the recruiting I did for P&G, you could punch a button on my back in my sleep and I could recite that question. Um, they will say, tell me about another example. Tell me about another example. Tell me about another example. By the time you're done, you're reaching back into high school just because they want five or six or seven answers. If, if there is a, um, if, if a company has kind of a core value or a core competency that drives all others, um, they will wear you out. So uh, I would start with college, I would start with more current, but I would, I would go back into high school. I think it's, I think it's still relevant, um, but I'm hoping that your best answers to those questions four years from now involve something that happened at Miami, um, you know, in the classroom, in an extracurricular experience, or work-related since you got here. Uh, other questions? Yes? If your uh, resume doesn't appear to be ready for an internship, would you say that uh, shadowing would be a great first step? Um, I think shadowing is a wonderful first step. Um, now, I would tell you, I'd love to see a shadow over the winter holiday. I'd love to see a shadow in a couple industries. And I think for the most part, um, you know, some jobs lend themselves better to it than others. Um, but you spending, you investing time to learn about jobs and see what they're like in the real world is, is always a great investment. But, but when you ask the question, when you say the interview or the, the job, or I'm sorry, my resume may, may not be ready or internship ready, 
um, I think the bar is a whole lot lower in terms of it being internship ready. If you go back and say, what am I looking for out of you in terms of your resume? I, I want to know, you know, and, and, and your grades don't just tell me how smart you are. It's a combination. They're smart and they try hard. You're not going to find a lot of people in college with high GPAs that don't work at it. So I want to know that you got over the academic hurdle, because that tells me those two things about you. And I want to know you're engaged on campus. And maybe you're in an organization or two related to my, what my organization does. Right? So let's say I'm an executive director for a not-for-profit, okay? And so I want to know if, if I see you're a two-year member for Habitat and you started something up, you know, some new fundraiser for Habitat, I'm going to look at it and say, okay, he's got the grades and he's got, um, you know, he clearly has a passion for the kind of work we do. Let's give him a try. I mean, you just have to get an internship, you just have to be moving up, moving in the right direction. You don't have to be there yet. Does that make sense? So I wouldn't, you know, the, the, I'm sorry, the bar's not that high for an internship. You just have to show good, good positive momentum. Yes? Uh, the book is called Quiet, uh, The Power of Introverts. You're welcome. So what, what was my motivation to be great? Um, you know, it, it's almost as simple as the fact I got kicked in the teeth a couple times pretty hard. Um, one was not getting into Notre Dame, which I was able to I really didn't want to go to Notre Dame. I kind of did, I kind of didn't. I was sick of being a little O'Brien. Um, and so after a few weeks, I said, you know what? I don't, you know, I didn't really want to go anyway. And Miami seems like a pretty darn good place, and it'll be a lot of fun, and so that'll be fine. Um, the problem with having two in the family ahead of me that went to Notre Dame was any money my father had put aside for college for all of us was long since, you know, it was like just-in-time college funding, uh, and it, it was gone. Um, so at that point, I was trying to figure out how we were going to pay for me to go to college. And, uh, and then we had an awards assembly at the end of my senior year in high school. And a lot of these kids, I'd been to school K through 12 with them. And the people that got, the people that got uh, athletic scholarships, I was very happy for them. Uh, they had skills I didn't have. We had a guy who could punt the ball halfway across the universe. You know, people like that, okay, I get that. But a lot of people got academic money, which I didn't expect and didn't realize was out there. And, uh, and as one by one they went up and got their awards and you know, theoretically got their checks, and I sat there in the audience thinking, I don't know how I'm going to pay for school. I don't even know how I'm going to pay for the first semester. And all these people were going for free for whatever reason. I thought, if, if I keep making the decisions I'm making, um, those same people are going to get the jobs ahead of me in four years, and I'm going to get what's left over. And I just said, you know what, what whatever it t if in four years from now I can't pick my job, I at least want to be able to look myself in the mirror and say, you know what, you gave it your best shot. You didn't get the job you wanted, but you didn't really, you know, you did everything you possibly could, and sometimes that's enough. And, and what I found was um, when I got here and, and developed really good habits early, um, once you know you're capable of getting the grades, it's kind of fun. You're like, I didn't, I didn't know I could do this. And then they go, I want to try and do this one more semester. And, and you're making different choices. I mean, I was never around. I mean, in, in the afternoons, people will burn They'll burn hours on, on video games, on watching bad old reruns. The amount, of, the amount of social media time that you'll take. And you just have to say, you know what? None of that's that great. 
I mean, do you want to miss a phenomenal party on Saturday night? No, I didn't either. But the stuff you miss on Tuesday afternoon from 2 to 6, it's not that great, is it? My two veterans? No. You go do your thing, and at the end of it, you have, you know, you're, it's the beginning of your senior year. You've got a full-time job offer locked up. Life's good. And a lot of people don't. A lot of people are going to be freaking out. But you go, yeah, it's pretty good. So it was, it was really getting kicked in the teeth a couple times and, and knowing I could do better and saying, um, I'm just going to see what happens. And once it does, just momentum starts to carry you. And, uh, and then, it gets, then it gets exciting. And it gets good. Yes, final question. It's 830. Who's got a just phenomenal last question? Yes. What are you talking about in your class? Oh my gosh. What do I talk <laughs> about in my class? Um, the class I co-wrote with Don Davis, who I mentioned is Steve Case's right-hand um, person. And uh, it's the 10 most important habits for success in business and life. Um, and we don't have tests. And at the end of the semester, each student has to write a 10-page life plan and present that to me and defend it in a 30-minute one-on-one meeting. And, and it's really all about, are you reaching as high as you can reach? Are you doing as much as you can possibly do? Um, so that when you look back in 10 years or 40 years, that you'll have no regrets. Um, so it is, um, I think they would argue it's the classes, it's a fairly intense experience. Um, but, uh, but hopefully a lot of fun too. All right, so the final question has to be about college, not my class, so we can't end on that. Um, so I need one more. Or we can be done. I'm okay with that too. Yes? If you could go back to college tomorrow, what's one thing you would change? Oh my gosh. Um, if I could go back to college tomorrow, what's one thing that I would change? That's a really good question. I don't know if anyone's ever asked that of me before. Um, I don't really have a good answer. Maybe um, you know what? I, I, I will say, um, if I could do one thing over, I would not be nearly as intimidated as I was by people in suits. And it's odd to me because my dad wore a suit every day for every year when I grew up. But, but when I came through when I was a sophomore and I had to start interacting with people in their 30s and 40s and 50s who wore suits, um, I was absolutely terrified of them. And um, it was a constant source of stress as I was trying to work my way through like um, going to functions and, and like having to interact with these people. And, and once I just realized they were human beings, it was really easy. But it was an incredible amount of stress for me. And, uh, and if I had to do it over again, I would do it with the knowledge that um, they're just people like me. They're just older and they, um, you know, they wear the uniform of their trade. So that's my answer to the question. So with that said, um, good luck. Take the time to read the book. I think it will be a great investment of your time. Um, and don't expect, as I tell my class, don't expect success to be a straight line. It won't be. I mean, you're going to have setbacks. You're going to have days or weeks where you're really frustrated and throw up your hands and say, I can't do this. You're going to go down a path and think it's the greatest thing ever and maybe wake up six months later and go, I don't even really like this. Um, but if you're proactive, you're willing to take intelligent chances and risk and put yourself out there, I think you'll have a phenomenal career. And truly, um, I come here year after year and I teach year after year because I believe that this place is absolutely phenomenal. Um, and I'm excited for each and every one of you. So thanks for coming tonight. I appreciate it. And I hope I gave you uh, a little leg up on the folks that didn't. And, uh, and I hope to see you in two years. So. Thank you very much again.